What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the final regular season edition of the Deep Dive. Um, Joe Spears alongside Kevin Bergsmith. Kevin, how you doing, man? Doing good. Tennessee keeps winning, so rolling with the balls every Saturday. It's it's been a fun season so far. Then you just forget Florida State exists. Makes sense. Exactly. I, I understand. Exactly. Um, they, Notre Dame gets them this weekend, so I'm mm-hmm. very very excited about that. Um, yeah, regular season's over, man. We're on to week. Um, Week 12, in a sense, first week of the postseason. Uh, before we get there, though, we're going to go over um, a couple of players you saw the last two weeks, week 10 and week 11. Um, we'll get right into it, man. You saw NBA. You saw Baylor. Um, Baylor rolled in that game. Uh, kind of close early on. They didn't roll, really roll, actually, looking at it. Uh, Baylor won 32-21. to 21. NBA gave them all they can handle for a while. Um, number one team in the state, though. Um, before we get into some player breakdowns, just your overall thoughts on the game. Uh, really impressed with NBA. I expected, I didn't expect them to roll over, but kind of expected Baylor to come in and just handle them, and Baylor to come, and NBA to look at look at each other and go like, "All right, screw this." Uh, but they fought. They came out ready to play. They had the lead at the end of the first quarter, uh, giving them giving them a tough game all the way through the fourth quarter. Uh, Baylor definitely had to earn it on the road, uh, but Baylor was definitely they definitely looked like the number one team in the state, having to survive NBA and. Uh, they they took care of business. Um, yeah, they they're kind of loaded with talent. You you do these notes and just kind of looking all over their players. It's like Division One, Division One, Division mm-hmm. One. Um, I think we'll really just kind of start in that backfield. Um, Shakai Mills Knight, the junior yep. we all know about, but they also have a really talented sophomore. So talk to me a little bit about what you saw of those guys. All right, so Shakai Mills Knight uh, came out first carry, uh, ran right over somebody, broken tackle. Uh, he's huge. He's 6'1", 217, looks every bit like a prototypical SEC back. Uh, and then they kind of rode with a hot hand. They went with a really talented sophomore, uh, Daniel Georges, I think his name is, uh, Rocks number zero. Uh, he was impressive. Uh, it's He looks like prime Chris Johnson, Alvin Kamara. He's a little scat back. He can do everything. Uh, makes a Makes a lot of defenders miss tackles. He can catch it out of the backfield. Very dynamic player in space. And they just rode with him the whole uh, second half. Kept giving him the ball. Kept beating the hot hand. He was very, very impressive to me. They also have a really talented receiver. A couple of really talented receivers outside yeah. of Cam Sparks, who's uncommitted. I uh, know Tennessee fans really hope he decides to go there. And then uh, Jakeem Dotson, who's the transfer from Memphis, um, those two guys have been outstanding all year. What did you see out of them? Uh, Cam Sparks, uh, very talented. They use him in the short game a lot. A lot of quick screens, uh, jailbreak screens, uh, just trying to get him the ball in space very quickly and let him do uh, do what he does in space. And then Joakim Dotson is more of a polished route runner, uh, definitely runs like deeper routes, posts. Uh, he had an out-and-up touchdown that was uh, – you put it in uh, – Put it in in coach film. Uh, guys will be watching that in coaching clinics in February. Uh, it was fantastic. A little out and up, broke the corner off, caught it down the sideline. It was, I was the only guy on the NBA stands that made a sound like, oh, oh, uh, it, it was really fun to watch. Everybody else is like, good God, man, come yeah. on. Um, what did you see out of their line? They got a couple of really good linemen as well. I know one committed to MTSU, one committed to Georgia Tech. Uh, what did you see out of those guys? Yeah, so uh, what's his name? Uh, Jimmy Bryson is the center for them going to Georgia Tech. He played both ways, uh, had a sack on the first play of the game uh, as a nose tackle, uh, but takes care of the line. They were running up and down on the NBA. Uh, he anchors their offensive line, did, did a re- really good job. And then the junior is Gabriel Osenda. He is a mountain of a man, uh, six, seven and a half, 300 pounds. Their left tackle, uh, he got called for a couple holding penalties throughout the game, but uh he had a, a few pancakes as well. And when he landed on somebody, it wasn't just a pancake. Like he threw him to the ground. He full on landed on them like a sumo wrestler. I, I felt it in the stands when he landed on a player. Uh, yeah. Baylor just kind of loaded with talent every year. Um, this is what they are. Um, they're the favorite to win D2 AAA this year after what they did to Macaulay a couple weeks ago. Really, their only – in-state test came to Brentwood Academy on that really sloppy, rainy night a couple weeks ago. So um, right now, looking like if both those teams take care of business um, the first, in their first couple playoff games, uh, we'll have them in the semi. So that'll be that'll be a fun one. Um, let's 
go over to the NBA side of things. They got a couple mm-hmm. of one guys as well. Uh, Brooklyn Davis committed to Austin P, uh, NBA standout running back. But Hugh Price comes back. Uh, he missed mm-hmm. most of the year with collarbone injury, and it looks like he had a decent night. Yeah, yeah. I'm very impressive with him. I was surprised that he played. I kind of thought he was going to be out the whole regular season. So saw him in warm-ups and got excited to see him play. Uh, had a rough start on the first drive. He got sacked, and then it was a bad snap. He had to fall on it. Uh, they had to punt, but then second drive he came out slinging it all over the field. They went down and scored. I think he punched it in himself on a QB sneak. Uh, was really in control of the game. Does a lot of things well. Definitely can run the ball. Uh, they like to put the ball in his hands. They do a lot of naked boost with him, get him out in space, throwing on the run. Uh, he was definitely in command of the offense, and they were in that game because of his play. He's huge. Like, he is a very tall individual. Um, yeah. Next to him a couple oh, yeah. times. He's, he's massive. Uh, good to see him back. Uh, NBA is not a team I would want to play in the postseason right now. I, I think with him back especially, um, that he just adds a dynamic that's going to be hard for a lot of teams to overcome. Uh, Brooklyn Davis, not the biggest night, but what you what you see out of him? I, I was surprised that he played receiver exclusively. Uh, well, knew that he was a running back, thought he's, he's projected to be a running back in college, and then he played outside receiver the whole night. Uh, but he's dynamic. Uh, made a few pass or made a few catches on curl routes and out routes and definitely a threat in space had a couple broken tackles on an out route. I think uh, he had targeted eight times. They threw it on deep a few times. They're trying to stretch the field, uh, but the passes that connected were all short and then let him do his thing in space. Uh, and then he caught, he had one catch on a fourth down and got absolutely destroyed by one of the players from Baylor a linebacker going to Buffalo and he held on to it, got the first down for him. Like, he is a tough football player. Yeah. Austin P fans are really going to love him. They've recruited the mid state well, running back wise. I know they have Malachi Dow yeah. there now. Uh, Brooklyn's a kid I could come in, maybe see some special teams action early on in his career and then see what goes from there. He's been, he's been fun to watch since his sophomore year. So, um, Baylor yeah. takes care of business against NBA. They're the favorite, but NBA, again, team we wouldn't want to play in the postseason. They got some guys. So, um, let's get to this past week, man. You were at Nashville Christian for the region championship there. We'll get to Nashville Christian in a bit because I think we all know who we want to talk about in that one. But we'll start with DCA. Um, Carson Sneed, the Tennessee Titan commit, who um, played a lot more linemen last year out of necessity to the team. Really, they needed him there. Big kid, uh, massive kid, six foot five and a half, 235 pounds, committed to Tennessee a couple months ago. Um, we were talking before this, you really like this kid. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's one of my favorite players that I've seen this year. Uh, maybe Morris for Oakland and then, uh, Gabriel George's for Baylor are probably like, and then Carson Snead are probably the top three players that I've seen this year, just in terms of my personal opinion of them. Uh, Snead, he played receiver. They kept him outside uh, on offense. Uh, but when he would have a pancake on a run block, he would absolutely throw a kid to the ground. I think it gets thrown around a little bit too often, like uh, hand through him like a rag doll. He absolutely would throw kids to the ground. It wasn't a block. It was assault. Uh, yeah. it, it's not fair what he's able to do on the football field. Uh, he played both ways uh, the whole time, both ways. He's an outside linebacker for them. Uh, did a good job of setting the edge, keeping everything inside. Uh, and then he also played special teams, like 10 snaps on special teams. So he – rarely came off the field. I think the only time he came off the field was on punt. Uh, so he maybe got like five snaps of rest throughout the entire game. Uh, and then my favorite part, I was sitting on the Nashville Christian sideline and the fans knew who he was. And whenever he would make a play, uh, especially a block through the whistle, uh, the fans were letting him hear it. They were letting the refs hear it, that they wanted to see a flag. Uh, but nothing was dirty. He's just a really smart, tough football player. And if you're playing against him, you hate him. And if he's playing for your team, you love that kid. Uh, So as someone who was watching him, I I loved every play that he did something on the field. You also love him because he's going to Tennessee. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, he's, it's good that he's more involved in the passing game. Um, He only had one catch for 14 yards. Um, You would think, should they play Nashville Christian again, they get him a little more involved because uh, Nashville Christian, we're going to talk about them. They rolled in this game 36 to zero. 
and they beat that's against a very good DCA team. Mm-hmm. Um, but with Nashville Christian, it begins and ends with Jared Curtis. Uh, kid's been on the national radar since he was a freshman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw him in the state championship that year, and um, they barely lost a friendship team. And he had his struggles in that game, but then he'd do some pass, and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. all right, um, that's cool. And then his sophomore year, he had a really good year. The team struggled. This year, it seems like it's all clicking, which should mm-hmm. terrify the rest of the state because National Christian's very young. Um, they got some guys. They're going to be right in the mix next year as well. You got to think they're the favorite. But um, Jared Curtis, out of all the players I've seen you grade, man, he he has one of your highest grades, and I think for good reason. Yeah, he is a he is an impressive uh, prospect at the next level. Uh, his size is already bigger than more most prototypical NFL prospects are. He's 6'4", 225. That is the first thing you notice when you see him. Uh, I was walking up, and immediately I could spot him that he's, oh, that's number two. That's the quarterback. All right. Uh, he looks like an NFL player right now, uh, to be honest, just his size. Uh, he's got the arm, and really he's got the mobility. Uh, he plays in a pro-style offense. He's under center. He's in shotgun. He's in pistol. They do a lot of stretch runs. They do a lot of naked boots. He's very mobile behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, he didn't even have to break tackles or make guys miss. He just was able to extend plays with his legs. And you can tell he really trusts his legs. He thinks he is the best player on the field, so he wants to make a play every play. Uh, but he's got the arm strength, too. He throws with great velocity uh, on short passes, slants, curls. He gets it out there to him on target, on time. And then he's got the deep arm, uh, which, you know, we talked about George McIntyre earlier this year. Jared Curtis is right there. Uh, I think McIntyre's deep ball is a little bit better, especially the accuracy on it. Uh, but the second touchdown that he had, they did a little flea flicker, and he definitely threw it like 40, 45 yards deep. Uh, guy walked in for a touchdown, uh, kind of blew open the game. It was, I think it was 7 nothing at that point. And then when they threw that flea flicker, everyone kind of looked around like, all right, we know what's going to happen the rest of the game. Uh, but yeah, between his mobility, his size and his arm strength, uh, there's, it, it's very easy to see why he's the number one prospect in the state of Tennessee in the junior class. I mean, he, right now you could argue he's the most touted after, um, 2026 prospect as well, uh, committed to, uh, Georgia in March or April recently decommitted. He recently opened up his recruitment. Um, looks like Oregon, Ohio State, Georgia, Auburn, Clemson, a couple, uh, a couple of these schools in the mix for him. Uh, Tennessee, probably not because they've already got their 2026 quarterback pledge and currently the number one player in the class. But you could argue between Curtis and, and that kid, it's it's interchangeable between the two. He's huge. I, yeah. I mean, he's six foot four, 225 pounds. He looks like a quarterback that you see in the NFL right now. Um, for me, I, you saw him live against a really good DCA team. Now, you know, could he do that against a Division Two Double A AA or Triple A team? Yeah, he could because he did that against BGA. It wasn't a loss, but mm-hmm. he still went off. Um, mm-hmm. Do you see him maybe as the type of quarterback that wherever he goes, he could come in and maybe play immediately? Uh, it always depends on the situation, but from a talent perspective, absolutely, he, definitely the type to make coaches when the doors are closed, kind of look at each other and go like, are we sure we're sticking with this guy? Cause this freshman is really good. Are you sure we don't want to get him out on the field? Um, especially seeing him in bad weather. It was, it was raining. I had the umbrella up basically the whole game through the third quarter. Uh, it didn't look like the weather affected him at all. Um, and if it did, it was only on a couple throws that uh, he didn't, he didn't, it, they weren't turnover worthy plays. He, he overshot him a little bit, so, and it was just, oh, okay, on to the next play. Uh, but he he looked every bit the number one prospect in the state. Kind of reminds me of a Dylan Rayola where, I mean, Rayola looked the part last year at Buford, and wherever he was before that, he immediately comes to Nebraska and starts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you hear Ohio State and Oregon are the favorites. Um, if Oregon's the favorite, I could really see him going in there and immediately making an impact. Um, yeah. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I don't know if a commitment's coming anytime soon. Um, Realistically, you look at his numbers last week, they're not as gaudy as some of his other ones have been this year. 
Um, I think that's more because Nashville Christian is just really good yeah. outside of him. They got TJ Ward at running back now, transfer from McGavick, I believe, and he is a dude. He is a yeah. stud. Yeah, he, uh, he went off. He went off at least for one touchdown uh, in, in that game, and he 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 was really good. Uh, brings he's, only, he's, one, he's a one cup. He's a one cut downhill runner. Um, it, it adds a whole different dimension to what they're doing this year. And then their defense is outstanding yeah. this year. That was their Achilles heel last year. DCA rolled them last year when they played, and mm-hmm. they shut them out thirty six to zero. So um, Jared's ability to run is the big thing this year. You see, I saw a play was it two weeks ago where he just absolutely trucked a kid, uh, ran yeah. him over. Um, I, I, I George is a great quarterback. Don't get me wrong. I think the arm talent's there, and it's it's amazing, like you said, but. For me, Jared's probably the number one quarterback in the state, regardless of class, just from what I've seen. Um, kid out in Westview, Graham Simpson is going to be there eventually, but right now it's Jared Curtis. So he's a stud, man, and Nashville Christian. They they look like the, they're going to bring home a gold ball this year because of him and the way that rest of that team's playing. So, um, Kevin, good stuff as always, man. Always enjoy talking with you. Uh, before we go talk about the atmosphere at both games, uh, what'd you like? Uh, what'd you think of both stadiums? Ooh, well, I love NBA stadium. Uh, the atmosphere is fantastic and their stadiums. I mean, it's a college campus when you walk up there. Yeah. Uh, it's great. It was, I, I love that stadium. NBA stadium is very, it's an epic place. When you walk in there, I, I don't understand how you couldn't be intimidated if you were uh, a visiting player. Uh, and fans are nice. Uh, I knew somebody when I walked in, he was uh, cooking barbecue. I walked in, I was like, oh, hey, what's up? I uh, felt like I was home. And then I knew someone else who uh, works for NBA as well. So saw him at the end of the game on the other sideline. Uh, it felt like home to me. I love NBA. Uh, and then Nashville Christian, kind of the same vibe. It's just uh, a smaller atmosphere. Um, even with it being bad weather and Halloween night, uh, it was a pretty good crowd. I walked in. And they're passing out free candy. I had to double do a double take. Are you sure you? I can take this. Oh yeah, sure. Go ahead and grab whatever you want. Um, yeah, it was great. I love their field, their stadium. Uh, what? It's a very good, very nice grass field, especially in the in the rain. It was. It could have been a lot sloppier. Uh, so very good upkeep on it. Love the atmosphere there as well. Week twelve is here. You are going to be at a playoff game this week. You're going to be checking out uh, some of the best in Metro Nashville, Procon, as they host South Gibson. A lot of really good players on that team. Think of Kyler Garcia, the Indiana commit, JV on Kennard, the do it all athlete, Josh. Sim- I mean, they got a bunch of dudes. So, um, and they're also you're also going to get a pissed off Procon team because of how they lost last week. So, mm-hmm. uh, I think those kids are going to put on a show for you. Uh, for me, I'm going to be at Green Hill. They host Blackman. I was at Green Hill on Thursday when they beat Mount Juliet for the region title. Um, we all thought they'd probably play Coffee County, but Coffee County ended up upsetting Blackman. So Blackman's the four, and that's a very, very hard round one matchup. So yeah, right. um, week one of the playoffs, usually lay some eggs. I think you're going to get a uh, a lot of highlights in your game. Yeah, um, I think those kids are going to show out. Kyler, Kyler Garcia is very sneakily one of my favorite players. That kid's a monster. Okay. Um, so, and I, you, I mean, I use hot right now. So, yeah. um, Kevin, my buddy, my friend, my poor FSU fan compadre, um, always enjoy talking with you. Um, we'll do this again next week. Some we'll record this over the weekend, get this out and, uh, hope you enjoy some football this week and hopefully it's dry out. Hopefully we, yes, yeah, hopefully I, I need it to be, I've had two, two, rainy games i uh, needed to be or actually three uh yeah. needed to be dry for the playoffs hopefully the, re- the rest of the season i hear you i'm trust me i'm sick of it so um we'll we'll have the new episode out next week we'll get this out later in the week and until then you can find me on all my instagram handles at joe underscore spear seven kevin we'll uh can't wait to see what you find out about pearl cone next week man until then everything at 615preps.com and on our youtube channel thanks guys